That's your ball game. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers lose 23-13 to in a game that they needed to win to make the playoffs. Win and they're in. That was what was at stake. Bucks didn't show up until the fourth quarter. That is not good. And I want to start off with that. Like, this team did not show up to play through three quarters. You tried to make it a ball game in the fourth quarter. That's great, but it was way too too little too late. Where was that fire throughout the first three quarters? Where was that drive throughout the first three quarters? It wasn't there. And look, on the offense, on the defense, on the special teams, horrible first three quarters. Horrible, horrible first three quarters. The Saints won through three quarters of this game in every single statistical way you could think of. And the Saints were a team where they knew that if they lost, their season was over and they showed up like they wanted it and the Bucs didn't. The Bucs the Bucks did not. That's what it boils down to, man. That's what it boils down to. The Saints wanted it more than the Bucs. And the team just collapsed in on itself when it mattered most. Um, and there's a lot of, and I think everybody has a little bit of blame here, right? The coaching staff for getting the team prepared for this game failed. The offense to try and get anything going through three quarters failed. Some people are going to say the defense played fine. And that that is reasonable, giving up only 23 points. But you still let Derek Carr be hyper-efficient and the Saints offense be hyper-efficient through three quarters. And even special teams. Jake Camarda had his worst game as a buck today. So it was just all, all phases of the football. This team fell flat through three quarters. Now things got a little bit better in the fourth quarter. The Bucks tried to make it a game, but at that point it was too little too late. At that point, it was too little too late. And just to look at the stats here, I am live, by the way, still on the uh, on the YouTube channel here. So this was probably the worst three quarters of Baker Mayfield's time as the Tampa Bay Buccaneer. Yes, he did finish with 22 of 33, 309 yards, two touchdowns, but two interceptions in moments where earlier in the game, you had an interception in... Two interceptions in the first half. Sorry, one interception in the first half, one interception in the second half. You, you can't turn the ball over. And I, I used to say this with whoever the quarterback was. If it's if it was Jameis, if it was Tom Brady, if it's Baker, you're not going to win football games if you throw in interceptions. There was two pretty bad interceptions by Baker. I think that this was probably his worst three quarters as a buck. Now, he tried to make something in the fourth quarter. Have a couple of deep plays. He had a 54-yard pass to Trey Palmer. He had a 47-yard pass to Chris Godwin. But it was too little too late at that point. The Bucs had already done enough damage to themselves throughout the first three quarters of the game. Baker Mayfield's two interceptions did not help the case. In my opinion, I think this was his worst three quarters as a buck until that fourth quarter. Now, it was great that he tried to come back and make it a game in the fourth quarter, but... It's too little too late. Now, can Baker rebound? I absolutely think Baker can rebound. And this isn't the nail in Baker Mayfield's coffin, in my opinion. I do believe that. I don't. I do believe that this is not the, the end of to say, well, he's done in Tampa. Because they just did come off of a four-game win streak. That's also pretty important to remember, where Baker played some pretty good football. But he had a bad game today. He did. He had a bad game today. And that's that, that is what it is. I'm not going to sugarcoat that. He had a bad game. The run game, Rashad White, 11 or he had a bad 3 quarters. Fourth quarter was better. But he had a bad 3 quarters when when he needed it most and it's too little too late by the end. Rashad White 11 carries for 42 yards. He did have a fumble. Oh, uh, you you got to wonder what it would have been what it would have been if that fumble wasn't there. Right, you gotta wonder because that fumble came at a point where the Bucks were running the football pretty well. We're running the football pretty well at the end of the first half. Right, you had 
Rashad White for six yards. Like, the, the team was rolling. Seven yards to White. Four yards to White. Ten yards to, to Palmer. Six yards for White. Ten for Edmonds. Eight for Edmonds. Rashad White had a 16-yard carry down to the Saints' 27-yard line. Fumbled. If that fumble didn't happen, much like the, the, the Baker Mayfield intercepts, interceptions, what would that have looked like? I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll never know. Maybe the offense would have gotten going, would have gotten things going. But it was just the story of the day that this team couldn't couldn't get it done. So that was their third turnover of the day. The fourth turnover of the day, unfortunately, came on a Trey Palmer, who, who had five targets, four catches, 84 yards, and a touchdown. He had a 54-yard catch. This was, if we can find it. So that was the end of the half. Sorry. Oh, the Rashad White fumble came in the second half. Sorry. That resulted in a Saints field goal. Punt, punt, interception, punt. Touchdown to Trey Palmer. He did catch a touchdown, which was great. You had 348 left. First play of that drive. Man, you get 54 yards. Palmer. It was it was a it was a bit of a deep throw. It was a tough catch for Palmer. He went down to the Saints 21, fumbled, recovered by the Saints. If he would have caught that, what would have happened? The game probably still would have been a loss, but it would have made you think a little bit more. But it was the story of the game. Evans finished with 70 yards. Godwin finished with 81 and a touchdown. Edmonds, I thought, played pretty good today. Edmonds had three carries, 16 yards, five catches for 40 yards. I'd love to see more Edmonds. I think he's been good whenever he's been playing. But again, you turn over the ball four times on offense, you ain't winning a game. You ain't. Showcase the Trey Palmer, Rashad White fumbles. That was unfortunate. And I know, okay, this is where I want to talk about the defense. Because I know people are going to say, look, the defense played well. Better than the offense, that's for sure. Better than special teams, that's for sure. But we didn't see a lot of splash plays from the defense today. And that's just, that's my thoughts and opinions on it. Levante David finished with 11 tackles. No major stats from Winfield. Devin White had a tackle for loss and a pass deflection. No major stats from a lot of people today. One sack from Marquise Watts, and it was because Derek Carr went out of bounds. The pass rush today without Shaq Barrett was not good. You had seven tackles for loss, which was nice. Only three quarterback, or sorry, only three passes defended. Zero quarterback hits. In the reverse, by the way, the Bucks' offensive line was not great today. If we go to the Saints, they had three quarterback hits, two sacks, six tackles. Sorry, five tackles for loss, six passes defended. Uh, you know, it just goes to the idea that the Saints wanted it more. And to talk about the defense real quick, Derek Carr, 24 of 32, 197 yards, two touchdowns, was not harassed a lot today. Was not. Jamal Williams, 19 carries, 58 yards. Alvin Kamara was doing good before he went out with injury. Jawan Johnson picked apart the Bucs today. Eight catches, 90 yards, and a touchdown. Taysom Hill beat Antoine Winfield Jr. in a foot race for a touchdown. It's just the kind of day it was today, man. It was the kind of day it was today. The Bucs just didn't show up until the fourth quarter when they were forcing a lot of punts. Jake Camarda, speaking of which, had his worst day as a buck. 41.4 yard average, one punt inside the 20. I want to showcase this because some people might not know how bad it was today. First off, the Saints score on their opening drive. Bucks have to punt. It's a 51 yard punt, which is not great. But for Camarda, it's it's really not good. The Bucks force a punt. Baker gets the interception. Defense forces another punt. The Bucks force another punt. The Bucks have to punt again. It's a 44-yard punt down at the Saints 40. That's great field position. Saints score a touchdown with some good field position. Bucks have to punt again. This time it was a 28-yard punt down to the Bucks 46. Saints score a field goal off of that. Bucks punt later in the game. It's a 37-yard punt down to the Saints 34. It was just not a good game from Camarda until the last punt of the game. I think he had a 47-yard punt down inside the Saints' 8-yard line. And I know the Saints punted the football a lot today as well. I know they did. They punted the ball. If we can get a look at it. They punted the ball six times today. Three inside the 20. 
So, I mean, the defense did do some things good today, but they lacked splash plays. Really, the whole team lacked splash plays. Until we saw the offense get a couple of things going in the fourth quarter, but by that point, it was too late. You didn't have enough time on the clock. So, in a crucial game where if the Bucks won, they won the NFC South, and if the Saints lost, they were eliminated from the playoffs. The Saints showed up and the Bucks didn't. And there's a lot of there's a there's a lot on that. I know a lot of people are going to talk about the coaching staff first and foremost. I think that that's 100% fair. But Baker Mayfield had two interceptions and and flopped through three quarters. Rashad White had a very crucial bad fumble, same with Trey Palmer. Yes, they had some good stats towards the end, but by the end of the fourth quarter it was it, you know, it was too little too late, man. Point blank simple as that. So now moving forward into the Panthers game, you've got to you got to win or you're out. You got to win or you're out. That's what the Buccaneers face. And the hope is that the Bucs will actually show up in that game. Because if they don't, it's ugly. It's an ugly, ugly way to end out the year. And you may be talking about some changes. You may be. So I don't know. Ugly loss for the Bucks, though, folks. It is what it is. Bucks lose 23-13 to in just a bad game where they needed to show up and they didn't get it done. But we'll see what they can do here next week against the Carolina Panthers to start off the new year. If they win, they're in. It's as simple as that. If they lose, they're out. It's as simple as that. Oh, man. Oh, man. Tough loss, but now everything's on the line next week.